So, I decided I was just dipping it into there a bunch of times, hanging on to it with the pliers. This is a pretty big piece. Um, I decided I'm just going to let it sit on the wood here for a few minutes while I have a smoke break. Um, anyways, you can see sort of, it might be like, it's, I always think you can't see as good as you can, and sometimes you can see it actually pretty good when I'm saying that you, might, you can't or whatever, but it's just because of what I can see on the screen. And then when I watch the videos, I'm like, oh, you could see it. But some of the stuff you still can't. But anyways, and it's really obvious when it's stuff that you can't. So hopefully this looks as good to you as it does right in front of my face. So pretty much it's a lump of silver mixed with whatever kind of other minerals are in it. And that blue, it really light blue, aqua -y kind of color stuff <laughs> is the acid eating away the calcite right out of the, the hunk of silver. It's really cool. I just don't want to leave this one in there because I don't want it to fall apart. So I'm just going to dip it back in a couple more times until all that rest of the white shit's gone and all that blue stuff's gone. And it should be left with just a chunk of silver mixed with probably arsenic and like arsenites and stuff. Because like it's getting shiny already too. I don't know, maybe it separates everything out of it and there's just enough silver there that it's going to stay a big mass. Because it is a pretty big chunk. It looks fairly solid and it's starting to get shiny just from the acid. And like I don't see the acid making anything shiny just because it would make it shiny because it's silver shiny when it's just silver. But anyways, so we're back to dipping her in here. Again, instant reaction. And you pull it out and you can just watch it eat away at all the stuff in there. So now all the blue stuff's back on again. I guess it's probably <coughs> because it was like oxidizing at the same time as it was just sitting like I basically did that and then sat it on the wood and then just let it sit there. So as it would evaporate, I'd imagine that would be just like the oxidization that would form from the acid eating it or maybe the acid turns into something else with the calcite and then it forms the blue shit from the reaction or whatever it is anyways. Like the water's pretty green now too. It was blue for a while, now it's pretty green. And I'm sure it's also dissolving like copper and whatever other kind of craps in this rock in the middle that I can't see. But it's crazy, you can just watch it like blasting out all that rock from in there and those bubbles, because it is. And you pull it back out and it, you literally watch it change. Every time you take it out it looks a little bit different. A little bit different. <laughs> So with any luck, this is going to do exactly what I want. And I'll have a couple of nice, really nice pieces to just sit there and look at. <laughs> and they'll be just basically down to the minerals, whatever's mixed in with the silver. And um, from there, I'm just going to probably do a few more. And then I'll do my like hunting around. And I'll end up just leaving the rocks there. Because honestly, I don't plan on keeping many. I'm just going to keep like a few nice pieces and that's it. Because there's not much point for me to do it. I mean, you need licenses and stuff for it to even be legal. So... I mean, I don't see anyone really bitching if I just have a few nice pieces that I found around on my adventures. Yeah, I would think that whoever would own the mine would be happy that people actually still care about it, and it's not just some dumbass teenagers that are going in and wrecking shit and lighting fires and stuff. I'm like, I'm 32 and I have kids that I want to bring out on adventures with me just to look at stuff because it's part of our history, and like, if we just leave it there and keep people out, no one's going to know anything about it. And it'll end up all getting forgotten, and this is supposed to be... Canada's most historic town well it, you do the silver trail which I did with my sister and her husband the other day and yeah it's pretty cool still to go see it all but it's all grown in so much the signs are all like graffitied and vandalized and no one's taking care of it I would at least hope that they cut the grass and stuff once this year or something at least I don't know <coughs> but I'm I love it not like I mean I, I wouldn't even want to be a miner at all I just really like the history of it and when you try to like think about what it would be like back then it, it like boggles your mind it really does because like it's the craziest shit you ever think of and when you understand how it was and the way that they did this stuff and it you know like uh, the working conditions and then the history of specific mines and 
Uh, they were in my backyard my whole life growing up. I used to explore them like a dumbass teenager, and then I grew up. So, anyhow, basically the moral of the story is, I bring a backpack home of rocks regularly, and they all end up back out in the bush pretty much, except for the select few that, you know, like even the ones in the video, some of those I'll, I throw back to you just because, you know, like if it's not, if I have another piece that looks a lot like it, and it's a bit bigger or something or whatever, it looks a little better, then I'll keep the one instead of the other. Especially if they're from the same site. I just like to get one nice one from each site. That's all, really. Unless one's like a leaf and one's like this. This looks starting to look more like a bunch of little leaves, though, but... Anyways, then, yeah, I might keep two from the same site. And like a bismuth crystal, if it's a nice one or whatever. But like, I showed a video of like four or five bis bismuth crystals, and I only ended up keeping the one rock. The other ones all went right back outside where they should be. And then it gives someone else a chance, too, and they've already been pretty clean, so it makes it easier for them to find them, too. Because it is getting harder to find them. If you don't know where to look, you know, then you're not going to find them as easy as I do. And it's not even that I really know where to look, like I do, but I've researched everything to, to know. So I know most of the mines that weren't open for very long at the start, and whatever, that have been forgotten since, like, um... Either the depression, or they didn't find much, or there's an accident, or the owner died, or whatever the reason being that they would close down the mine. It wasn't because there's was no more silver left, or whatever. Or if they closed right down mid shift, kind of thing, then there'd be definitely some pieces kicking around. And like, obviously, be smart about it if you're gonna go looking for pieces. Don't go in stupid places where you're gonna get hurt. And um, at the same time, if you use your brain, you'll figure out that you can find where they would load up the ore and stuff. So there's going to be little pieces that fell out or whatever, you know, from the ore carts or on the way into the ore cart. They missed the side or something or whatever it would be. And then there's the pieces that they look at and there's not much silver in them for what they could see. So they just toss it to the side because it wasn't worth it at the time. And it's still really not, obviously. The price of silver is way down, but they're pulling out, like this would be their normal ore. There's enough in there to make it worth it to mine this out. But a chunk that's like a rock that big and the silver is as big as what's left <laughs> what's left of the calcite in there, then that wouldn't be worth it for them and they'd just toss it to the side. Because it costs too much and they waste too much materials processing it for what they get out of it compared to the rest of what they'd be getting. At least for the most part. Most of the mines were really, really, really productive. Was, most of it was like they say the ones that weren't as pure or whatever, but they're still really pure compared to any other silver anywhere that you pretty much find. There's places that are as pure around probably like the half pieces that come out at least, but it's hard to understand unless you've actually been here, the way cobalt is and all that stuff, but like the amount of silver that came out of here just, it's ridiculous. And like all the history to do with it right from when they found it right to when they shut down the last mine, like... And then even since then, what the town's been doing to try to preserve the history, sort of, and, like, I mean, I say sort of, they did a really good job at setting up the Heritage Silver Trail and a bunch of sites around town, but then they just totally neglected them after and never done anything. And then I'm going to do a video one day of checking out all the different sites on the trail, just so that people will see it and know what the hell is here at least, and then they'll have an idea, and maybe they'll want to take the trip here and actually see for their self because the picture is nice but it's nowhere near the same as you know standing on top of like a 50 foot hole on a little platform where you can look down all around things like that and like open cuts right in front of your face that are massive people want to see that stuff so they just don't know it's here because they don't bother to show anybody they have a couple pictures of head frames which is also you know pretty cool at least the people that are up from our town lots of people in town just think they're ugly but anyways, they just show pictures of those and stuff, and like, who cares? I like them, cool, it's a building, there's a mine shaft under the tower, yippee shit. It's not the same as what people want to see, like, they'll see one, they might as well have seen them all, basically. But then you get to into where the locations of these mines are, and the mill sites, and where they dumped all the tailings, and all the waste rock piles, and everything, core samples just tossed, like, there's so much everything around here, it's ridiculous, and it just doesn't really add up to making any sense of why they would do it like that other than they didn't give a shit no one was planning on living here the whole town even was just houses planted down everywhere no grid or anything just like laid out wherever you could build your house they'd build them 
Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. That's just like a tiny bit of the history, or like of how at least some of the stuff that happened, not even so much the history, well, some of it I guess is, but I'm not still eating away at it. Oops. Yeah, but anyways, I'll definitely put this one in another video when it's finished. Let it sit for a while and see what it does when it stops reacting. Anyways, so yeah, there'll be one, I'll probably just put it in the next video with some other rocks or something instead of making another one just to show this one when it's done. And then the little pebble and the other piece too, and whatever else comes out of here too, I'll, maybe I'll just make a video of the finish, the final, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if you want to call it a product or not, because it, it, it's just a piece of rock disintegrating away while it's leaving whatever minerals are there, I guess, that don't also get eaten in the acid, but anyways. Yeah, I might just make one to show like the results of this test, that's what I'll call it, I'll call it a test. Anyways, so, yeah, I will do one more when it's finished, just so you can see what happened. But anyways, um, yeah, shouldn't be too long, the other one will be ready to you soon, so, uh, make sure you watch number three, I guess, if you want to see the end result of this.